What's up, everybody? You are listening or watching a brand new episode of On Air with JT. And like always, my name is Justin Thomas, but you can call me JT. And I'm here with my co-host, Madeline Haley Marquez and David Chin. What's going on, guys? What's up, JT? What up? What up, Chinny? What's going on? How you guys doing? Good, good. Another day in What's paradise? That? <laughs> oh yeah, another day in paradise. You know how it is. Just grinding like always. Grinding. Grinding. How many times have I said that on like this podcast? <laughs> I don't know, but we should definitely clip it all together and put it in the reel. <laughs> definitely. Um I do have to say, you know, yesterday was it was International Women's Day, right? Yes. Yeah, so I want to give a shout out to all the women, you know, and, and like I was talking about on my podcast the other day, like as I'm talking to brands and companies for potential like partnerships, like, and this might be a little naive of me, um, but I was a little surprised on like how many businesses are like women, like women run and like women found it. Like, and that's awesome. Like, like I like, like, I love that. I love to see things like that. Um, and I knew that there was like a lot of women that had businesses, but like, th- like from what I've come across so far, like, there's like more businesses that are run by women than guys. And, and that's something cool to see. I guess like, I, like, like I'm not against that. Like, I, like I actually like encourage people of any type of any gender of any type, like it doesn't matter. Like I, I encourage anybody to be like an entrepreneur if that's something that you want to do. And um, yeah, I might sound a little naive by saying that I wasn't aware of like how many businesses that were, you know, that currently ran or run by women, but, um, I I was a little surprised, but I actually, I liked it. I liked seeing that. I really, really like it, you know, not just women, but like, you know, just any, anyone, you know, like, you know, just anyone out of the norm, you know, like, you know, it's not just just like a a white guy in a suit. Like, you know, it's something, you know, I, I I like, you know, I like diversity. I, I like, I like companies and things and places that are diverse. I don't like, you know, that, you know, regular old society bullshit. Like, I like diversity. Like, I like living in places that are diverse. Like, I don't want to walk outside and just see all white people. And I'm white. (laughs) So I can say that. Like, I don't want to see that. I I just don't want to be in that kind of environment personally just from my personal experiences and I'm white, so I can say this shit, you know, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see a bunch of white people every time I, you know, everywhere I go, I want to see a diverse of of different cultures and people. And that's what I, I I don't know. I I just like that. I feel you on that JT. And, and it's so cool to see all these women having uh, their businesses up and running and and blue. My friend, um, I just seen her story and there's just like um, shipping label after shipping label coming out of her machines because she's making so many sales. It's just awesome. And like another thing I wanted to say about that on that subject was like, I feel like a lot of businesses that were started by men really were thought of by their wives or like sisters or something. But, you know, Maybe women. In some cases, yeah. Stuff. But I mean, there, I are, there are a lot. I know, I, like, I'm aware of the, of the fact that there's a lot of women that are, like, executives for companies, for, like, Fortune 500 companies, like, corporate America, like, big wig executives, like, you know, VPs or, like, C-level executives. But, like, um, I don't know. I, I was just um, not – I don't want to use the word shocked because I, I, I was just surprised, but, like, in a good way. Like, I, I like to see that, like, you know – nothing against you know guys that start businesses like including myself that's an entrepreneur and a business owner but i don't know I, just for me personally i like diversity i like i don't know that, that that's just me I, that's just who i am <laughs> um there's a lot of things i want to talk about in today's show it's not going to be that long but it's also not going to be less than an hour so it's going to be a decent show uh, and there are going to be a lot more episodes this week, and we have some really good interviews upcoming. 
there's so many exciting things in the works, I'm telling you. And if you're interested in advertising on this podcast, uh, the Mental Health Awareness podcast that I'm launching with Maddie soon, all the other podcasts, my podcast media network, the online radio station, the marketing, social media marketing management and um, uh, consulting agency. If you're interested in advertising or in all of those or just the podcast, whatever it might be, and please, serious inquiries only, you can email me at onairwithjt.com at gmail.com. Once again, if you're interested in advertising, having a partnership, sponsorships, whatever it might be, all business inquiries, please email me at onairwithjt at gmail.com. You can also watch the show, the full episodes, clips, uh, behind the scenes, exclu- exclusive content, some random shit, whatever uh, I feel like uploading to my YouTube channel, and that is at on air with JT, or you can just go to YouTube, type in on air with JT. If you do have an a, account, I would greatly appreciate it. If you could please subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, so you can stay up to date anytime I up, upload or update any videos or any recent content. And like always, you can listen to the podcast on all major streaming platforms, such as Apple podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. all of that information is right over at onairwithjt.com. But I do know that a lot of people that listen to the show, they listen on the Apple Podcast app on their iPhone. And if you are a fan or supporter, you like what we do, if you could do us one big favor, I would greatly appreciate it. And it will literally take you like 20 seconds, if that. All you got to do is go to the Apple Podcast app, the Purple Podcast app on your phone, type in On Air with JT, click on it, scroll all the way down, and you can rate the show one out of five stars. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps the algorithm, and it just gives me a little bit of insight. But if you ever need to get in contact with me or the show, again, On Air with JT at gmail.com. Social media is Everything is at onairwithjt.com, but I do mainly use my Instagram, which is Justin Thomas Insta. That's J-U-S-T-I-N-T-H-O-M-A-S-I-N-S-T-A. I know that was a lot of information that I just gave you. Even uh, it's, you know, making me a little flustered. So all the information, all the links and platforms to follow me, to watch me, to listen to me is all at onairwithjt.com. Maddie and David, where can people follow you? Uh, you can find me at on Facebook. I uh, type in Madeline Haley Marquez, M A D A L Y N H A L E Y M A R Q U E Z. And on TikTok and YouTube, I'm Lazy Eye 16. And on Instagram, I'm Madeline. M A D A L Y N N underscore Haley H A L E Y. Um, Soon I want to change that because it is it is a lot. Just like JT just said, it's a mouthful. And I definitely start stuttering halfway through it. But, um, yeah, check me out. I make cool reels. And uh, David here, his his username is? Uh, my Instagram is nismochin underscore 23. That's N-I-S-M-O-C-H-I-N underscore 23. And Facebook's David Chin. And he's also on TikTok at Chinny Murders. <laughs> Word. Definitely go give both of them a follow. They, Like I always say, they always put out really good content. And it's a variety of different kinds of things. It's not just the same thing, you know, same theme or whatever. They switch it up. So definitely you'll go give both of them a follow, please. Uh, I guess the first thing we're going to talk about is Ja Morant. David? <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts? I, uh, <laughs> all, all I can think uh, about is that meme that you tagged me in. But it's yeah, that's all I can think about. This guy, this guy, you know, he came from obviously a good, uh, a good neighborhood and a good home, and a middle, obviously a middle class home. And mm. he did that. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And now, and now, what? He's locked up. He's locked up now. I think. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think so but i, I, I do know that no, i do know them. that people like stephen jackson former NBA, nba player has spoken out obviously paul pierce you know shout out to pierce celtic legend um he yes, he spoke out because he had to get he had to bring a gun 
with him after he got stabbed in in that Boston nightclub. Yeah, he he's not facing criminal charges, but he 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 had. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'd want to protect myself too. No, but I the, can't... Then, then you hire a bodyguard. You you I have mean, the money. Get, you have the money. It. You have the money. Why are you jeopardizing and putting yourself right. in a situation to fuck up your whole career in life? Yeah, it's you, di- it's you, different if you're they, if you're just fucking that. pay somebody. It's not to, for them with the what like his salary and like you know that that's nothing. Yeah, I guess I just like seen it from my perspective and not his and everybody else's because, you know, like for me, obviously, like I can't afford, you know, a security guard. So, no, but he you know, afford, you he could afford to have, you know, he could afford, afford, afford to have like 20 CIA, former CIA, CIA agents. <laughs> no, dead ass, though. Like people like, like 20 with CIA. That, no, really, with that kind of salaries and stuff, like you don't need to do that. Like, you don't, why, why are you putting yourself in? in a position to to fucking jeopardize everything. I don't it's understand true. it. It's so fucking mind-boggling to me when we see this. We've seen this with Aaron Hernandez with the Patriots. You know, he couldn't get out of, you know, whatever that, you know, of doing that shit. And, like, it's like, bro, you got the world by your fucking, by the balls. You got, you got, you, you got the world in your hand. And, and some of these, some people... And I'm not just talking about John Morant or anyone, you know, this is, this goes for anyone. You know, I see this, we see this time and time after again, people, they come from nothing or, or, or they work really hard. They become successful. They make it quote unquote, you know, they're on top of the world and then they do stupid shit to fuck it up. Like, why'd you work so fucking hard to get to that spot? To then do some stupid shit that can jeopardize and fuck everything up. I don't understand that logic. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, if I was like, and I know, you know, sometimes for some people it can be hard to like, you know, stop doing like stuff in like a different kind of life and like, you know, uh, activity, whatever it might be, you know, I get that. But like, you got to understand, like, first of all, what's more important? And then second of all, you know, for what? Like, why? Like, you're, like, you're making millions and millions and millions of dollars. You're star athletes or singers or rappers or actors or whatever it might be. And, you know, they finally make it and then they fuck it up and they do stupid shit. Am I saying that John Morant's like fuck for his entire career? No. Like he'll come back. Like the, it, it's definitely will put like a you know people will for, a lot of people will forget about it. But like it, it's still like why do that? Why put yourself in a position to fuck it all up? It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, and social media is is cutthroat and uh, kind of like just really savage with stuff like that. And they're really good at roasting people. Social media is just super cutthroat. Yeah. And they take things to the next level when it's yo, really not black, deep. black Twitter be crazy. Yo. I know. I be laughing. Yo. That shit got me. Yo. When I seen after the whole incident with John Morant, had to go to Twitter. Well, had to look up, look up like black Twitter. And, and yo, I, I was fucking dead. Oh my God! Like they were, he was again. I mean, he was getting roasted by everybody, but like, it, it's just stupid. Um, I guess the next thing I do want to talk about very briefly, you know, Katy Perry's on American Idol. Is that the show that she's on? I. Uh, it's one of those. It's, it's the one, voice it's, of American it's, it's, Idol. It's yeah. one of those shows. Okay, so there was a a musician, and I forget his name. I apologize. Who? performed actually was very talented and performed a great song and obviously it's, it was a little scripted on you know the judges and like every you know show is on tv but you know she asked like oh why'd you write that and he like he gave a backstory and it's really sad actually like you know he he lost like eight friends in a school shooting that you know and he could have died as well um and katie perry reacts and 
she, you know, all the blogs and tabloids and all, you know, everything in the news is saying she has an emotional breakdown. And she, and, and what she says to him is very true that, she, that she, you know, essentially he shouldn't have to make a song about that. And that's so true. But as an actor, as someone who is extremely observant, analytical, and who has studied body language for years, I can tell you that that is not 100% authentic. Those cries, that emotional, the, that, you know, is there some, like, truth in there? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that there isn't, but there's def, it's definitely acting. And if you can't see that, then I guess she's good enough of an actress to fool you. Um, but. I didn't see the video, but I mean, she she's a pretty good actress. I mean, I've oh, seen she, her. Doc- she, she is because people are are really buying it, you know, and it, it's crazy, you know. And I just had a you know shits and giggles. I was like looking at some comments on different you know articles or videos, and like maybe like one out of like every hundred people would be like, yeah, th- this seems fake. Like, yeah, no, sh- like people, like it's, it's crazy. Like if, if, she, if she's a good act- actress, then damn, then I must be a really good actor because that was a shitty performance and I'm not even a great actor yet. <laughs> but yeah. it, it, is, it is sad that, you know, the fact that, you know, unfortunately that musician had to make a song about losing eight friends in a mass shooting. It's so fucking sad. Um, But yeah, yeah. But it also goes to show you not to take away from that, but like just how fake and how scripted and how just everything is, it's all propaganda. Like not, I'm not saying like mass shootings and things like that, things like that like i'm just saying like what is what gets spread and what gets posted and you know the news cycles everything is structured everything is scripted you know it's not like you know they go in that morning like okay this is everything we're going to talk about no there's shit that you know some tv networks uh newspapers whatever you know, media outlets, you know, plan things that they're going to talk about months, years before they even do it. Some of them are so strategic and people don't really understand. Like people like that aren't super analytical and observant, you know, might not see that. And I'm not like putting you down or anything because that's, they they do it very, in very, in a, a clever way. Um, and, and, and it's the ultimate version of programming people. Um, and we've been being, we've been programmed since birth. You know, w- once we, you know, leave that wound, like, <laughs> here you go. Like I said, yeah. <laughs> the Truman Fuck. Show. The industry is fucked up for, for using things like that to their benefit to make money off of, of course, you know, it's just, Definitely. it's just the way it is, I you know? know? Definitely. Did you know, I actually really like the original version by Bruce Hosney. Hosney. That he, song? Yeah. You know, Tupac sampled that song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that. yeah. I, I like, didn't, I like the original version too. My dad said the same exact thing. That's so funny. You're such an old soul, JT. I am. I, I, I really am. I I really am, and I've always been like that. Um, that's why, like, when people, like, give me shit for, like, because I, I know I'm an old soul, and also just of, like, my life story and, like, things that I've experienced in, at an early age. Like, when I, like, say things, people are like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, you're not that wise. Like, I'm, I'm definitely not the wisest person in the world, but I'm wiser than a lot of people my age and i always been like that like growing up like i've always been wiser like i've always just been i don't know it's uh, it's weird but obviously like you know we're all human so we're, we all do stupid and dumb shit at times but like right. I, don't, I don't know even as a kid like I, I was pretty wise like looking back it's pretty weird 
I don't know. I feel like uh, it just comes with certain people, like from the day that they're born. You know what I mean? They're just old souls. That's just, I feel like that's just how it works. Yeah. Did you know today is uh, National Full March Full Moon Day? Which is weird because the full moon that was recently was on March 7th, but it's National March Full Moon Day. I did not know that. Yeah, I don't I don't know why it's on March 9th because the full moon was on the 7th, but I don't know why I just thought about that. But it says, "Get ready to see the magic of the full moon materialize before your eyes." March full moon, March 9th. I feel like you can see it even after the 2 days. Yeah, you can. You can I see think, it after 2 days. Damn, that's crazy. Yo, I I got to hear both of you guys', you know, opinions on this, but we can't, you know, talk about it for too long, but the whole Scotty Pippen, you know, MJ son, like that's so fucking like she's wilding. Like that's a that's a very ball. She knew what move. she was doing. That's a ballsy move. She knew what she was doing with that. That's that's Yo, real, real ballsy. You gotta have some balls to do some shit like that. <laughs> Who? Uh Scotty Pippen's uh ex now ex wife is with uh was it Le- Lisa Pippen's Lisa Park Pip- Pip- Lisa Pippen, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Lisa or something, something like that. And then Michael Jordan, beautiful woman, but like Michael Jordan co-signed that. Like, really? Why isn't it okay? I don't see the problem. Because they were teammates. They were teammates for years. So because you're on the same team with somebody, if you can't date somebody, and they were close friends for years, and think about this, they 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 were like very close, and like, yeah, Uh, and they were they were they were you know obviously the way Michael Jordan was, I'm sure there was so many. You know, personal, I don't want to say altercations, but like just hearing stories about, you know, MJ playing back in the day and just, you know, you know, he was kind of like a, you know, kind of like Kobe, like he wouldn't put up with shit. Like if you, if you were slacking, if you weren't giving it your all, he, he's going to call you out in, in front of everybody. He ain't going to put, you know, pull you to the side and to, you know, make you not feel embarrassed. Nah, he's going to call you out on your shit in front of, Everyone. <laughs> yeah, he got Steve Kerr's ass when uh, when he was on the, on the Bulls with him too. Yo, he got... Steve Kerr was fucking nasty when he was playing. Yeah, he was a good. That team was dope. All everybody. Yo, David. So Lasers Lupe Fiasco dropped ten years ago. How pretty crazy. fucking crazy is that? Pretty crazy, man. That dude's a musical genius too. Wait, actually. Is it 10 years ago or 11 years ago? Uh, when did it drop again? Like 2012? 2011. 2011, so yeah. It's way too early, and I'm not <laughs> good for math. 2023, y'all. Either way, 11. either way, it dropped over a decade ago. And, you know, that, that album, Lasers by Lupe, like, literally, you know, looking back on my life, that was one of the first albums that really, like, saved my life and like helped me when I was in a very dark place. And obviously the album is just a great album, you know, yet, yes, he did get a little criticism that it was maybe a little bit too pop mainstream with a couple of the songs. I can see that, but you know, that's Lupe experimenting, but like you can't, you know, take away the fact on how great of a lyricist Lupe was, Lupe is, to this, to this day. I mean, just the fact that he's teaching at MIT. You know, and Maddie, we were just talking about that. You know, and, and you know what I just saw the other day, Maddie? What? MIT is actually the number one college university in the entire world. Oh, shit. We thought it was up. I mean, you I, said I, it. I knew it was up there, but... I, I knew it was Little up there. I knew it was up there in the country, but I didn't know in the entire world. <laughs> so, oh, in the entire world? Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. That says a lot. I mean, I know people like obviously. I mean, not just for MIT, but you know, you know, Boston is also you know a college city, college town. So, like, you know, there's so many people that when they you know they go to college in Boston that aren't from Boston, um, just because of the great schools that you know we have to offer um but yeah it's fucking wild um i guess another thing we got to talk about is the whole tyga and and (laughs) avril lavigne like bro first of all like first of all 
when I seen that picture, I was like, yeah, like this is what it looks like when I put my playlist on shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like Tiger, so why are you being like, first of all, that's not your type. And like second, <laughs> second of all, why are you wasting her time? Third of all, why are you trying to be a skater boy? And fourth of all, Avril, why are you trying to make everything so fucking complicated? <laughs> Ew, that was amazing, JT. <laughs> Yo, oh man. I don't know. I'm here for it though. And I feel like he's trying to make like an impression and be like, you know what? I never gave a fuck about lips. I don't care about your face because look at Avril Lavigne. She's so natural. She's so talented. Well, you know the whole conspiracy and, about a clone thing, right? Have you heard that one? Yeah, that she's not even her and she's like dead or something. Like, yeah. like yeah, I heard that shit. I too. heard that story too. What's I, up with that? I, I believe it because I feel like I don't know. I, it's too complicated. Yeah. You're right. It's too complicated. Nor do we have the time, I and mean, we can go on for hours about that. But I do. I, like I do have a a good suspicion that there has been like musicians and actors and public figures, celebrities, famous people that have faked their death and that are still alive. I'm pretty confident that they're, they're you know, we're not going to get into who that might be or the people, but people do that. You know, people, you know, there's some time, I'm pretty, you know, if I was to be a betting man, and once again, you know, I'm pretty sure that there have been extremely influential, famous, ri wealthy, rich people, whatever, that had to, you know, whether they fucked somebody over the wrong way or fame or everything was too much, so they had to get a whole new identity and start a, a different life. That shit probably happens all the time. If you really think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've heard a rumor that they, they say that the Epstein isn't even dead. But that's, I, that's, think, I think that motherfucker's dead. But uh, it's just yeah. it's just crazy how oh the camera wasn't working. Like, <laughs> of course, right? Yeah, yeah. That okay. makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. I guess another thing I want to talk about is you know kind of an unpopular opinion, but the whole Will Smith and Chris Rock publicity mm -hmm. or stunt you know incident quote unquote staged it's acting distraction if you if you do you not understand that will smith first of all first of all they're both good actors but like really think about like all right will smith is a really good actor right okay how many movies how many movies and things has he has he done like hardcore fighting scenes where there isn't a double like a, a stunt double it's all uh, you know choreography it's, it's, it's all like you know it, it's all planned so you don't like do you in the way he slaps I mean, it's not like he like punches him he like does like the typical acting slap like it, it, it and if it landed a hundred percent on chris probably wasn't that it didn't hurt that bad you know there, there's ways to you know change the momentum of like the level of how like hard it'll, it'll hit you and shit like that there's so many things that these actors like especially trained professional you know a-list actors you know it's all you know it's it's all scripted you know yeah. it, it, but, but and it's weird because like because i'm thinking to myself like but why why would they do that because they don't need to first of all chris rock doesn't need to do any publicity stunts to get more fame or you know he's chris rock will he smith will smith doesn't have to do that he's fucking you know the, one of the biggest actors in the world so why they both, so why they both did that hundreds, happen that's the question they both have hundreds of millions of dollars yeah they're, they're, there's no reason so, so, i feel like they're just trying to I, I don't know, but that my opinion, and I only say this one one thing is that um, maybe they're just trying to make it look like you know another black person against another black person. I, I I know I'm a white girl saying that, but what what do you like? I don't know. It just seems like I, they're trying I, I to. I hope I hope not, because if that's the case, then I don't want to get into too too much because I'm not trying. I'm trying to have an acting career, but then that means <laughs> that essentially, you know, Hollywood and the white man is spreading more propaganda which ha which we know that happens you know obviously we're not dumb but like that's on a whole different level if that's the case 
And the yep. fact the fact that they agreed to do it or had to do it or to keep their career. I don't know. I don't know. Right. We don't know. We don't know what goes goes on. And nor you know, yeah, I mean I, I eventually I will, but like, you know, probably not after this episode airs, but uh there, oh, no. there goes my career right Real. in the trash. <laughs> fucking you know, Niki uh what's his name? Natumbo fucking finger waving. Oh, nah. God. Fuck out of here. I don't know. It, maybe every maybe everyone's just going crazy and it was real. That's that's what they want us to say, right? It, it it wasn't because if it was real, there would have been a lot more emotion. Yeah, I I feel like there would have been a lot more outrage as well. Yeah, like you know well, what I mean. I mean? There, there was an outrage. They, they like, I believe the they the, the academy like suspended him from going there for like ten years or some shit. <laughs> I, oh, I don't know. I mean, like during the filming, like what I, I wish they would have like, if if they were gonna what do are they that, gonna do a arrest, a you know, Will Smith on stage at, at the Oscars. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Like they just do like a takedown or something like that, and just turns into like a whole wrestling match or some shit. What like is that. this fucking? What is, <laughs> what is what is what is this bodyguard with Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, yeah. That's crazy, and you know it's crazy. Again, here we go again. You know, I was talking, I've been saying this for years. Another artist has sold a portion of his catalog for 70 million. Metro Boomin. Metro Boomin. Of course. I, I told you this was going to happen. Month, I, mean, I told you this y y last year. You know, I've been saying this for years, but I said it's, you know, specifically that this year we are going to see a significant amount of artists selling their catalogs we're seeing we're seeing this michael jackson's in the you know his estate is in the process of a half of it being sold for like 800 to 900 million and then um obviously metro boomin and you know i'm sure there's so many more in the works or that that'll be announced um yeah it's gonna keep happening so did you talk about this don't correct me if i'm wrong but did you talk about this with sam hollander i i can't remember I, I talked think, about it a little bit. Yeah, I, I think what he said made a, made it make sense to me a little bit. Where where he said oh, I something. Get, I get why they do it. No, I didn't. Oh. Like I know you understand it, but like I didn't. I was like, what? But that but then when he said where it gives them more room to make more stuff and be more creative, I I you know, I guess I get it. That's kind of cool. Definitely. It's really cool. You know, one thing I do want to say. And I know that people hear quotes about this or whatever, but if you personally haven't gotten to a certain stage in your life or you have goals and dreams, I'll be the first, you know, if I, if, if you have never heard this, you know, or at least from someone personally, you know, let me tell you, when you are really on your grind when you're really fucking working hard and you start obtaining some success and leveling up, it gets very, very lonely. For some people, it doesn't because they keep so many people around them and then half of them are like, yes, men, you know, will say, yes, yeah, that, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, do that, do that. No one will ever, you know, tell the truth. But, you know, when you have a small circle or for some people that don't even have a circle, you know, when you start leveling up and, you know, achieving more and more, it, it gets lonely. It, it really does. And not just like in terms of like, like romantically, like just in general, because you start having a different perspective a little bit, and obviously your world and your lifestyle kind of changes as you level up and grow. So for some people, you know, you might outgrow them. For others, you know, envy, jealousy, whatever it might be. But like, it's, I need you guys to understand that, you know, you need to fully accept that if there is a big goal or dream or thing that you want to do in life, there's going to be times it's going to be a lot of times, a lot of nights where you're by yourself. There's no support system. There's no 
you know, cheerleader telling you, yeah, keep going. You're doing great. You know, maybe for some people, but for some people, it's just you. And that's not always a good thing and it's always not a bad thing. But essentially what I'm just trying to reiterate is the fact is when you do continue to level up, boss up, succeed, you know, you start really following your life path. There are going to be moments where it gets very lonely and you have to fully accept that. I All I can think of is that song where it's like, lonely, what's the jokes I got? You know what I'm talking about? What comes to my, my, my mind, shout out to um, Rest in Peace, you know, Speaker Knockers. <gasps> Oh, I'm why did you have to? Oh, by, by my lonely. <laughs> Fuck, man. I, I, <laughs> it's the speaker knockers. Yeah, uh, he was, I he, miss, he was ahead of his time. Bro, he was so fucking ahead of his time yeah. because I can remember like 10 years ago, you know, walking down fucking Atlantic Avenue in Atlantic City with, with that playing in my, in my, uh, in, in my headphones yeah, he was, and, he was and thinking really, I was the coolest he, bitch out there. He, he, but. he was very smart. He, he, he wasn't only just a talented artist, but he was a very <laughs> smart kid. It's the, it's the Bang Bros, right? It, it's the, uh, they, they, they did a song called Bang Bros, right? Um, that I, I do thought, not know. I, I love, yeah. I love, they did. I know they did. I, I love their music, man. I, I can't even believe that you thought about that. Uh, I, that I have song. it on my phone. That, no, but like it's it's like that was in like I like I always say that was in the archives of my brain. I that song from the speaker knockers, and I think about it like once every two years. It's <laughs> kind of sad. It should be played on the regular. But yeah, no, it, 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 I can see what Such you mean by song. it does get lonely on the top. Like I can see where you mean that because I don't ever feel lonely and I wish that I could be alone sometimes. But with uh, having a kid and with with David, it's like it's like, damn, like you never get to feel lonely. But, yeah, but and I'm not complaining. Like I've always been a loner. I've always been like introverted. I've always been like a homebody. But, you know, and I. Oh, you know, even throughout my career and even growing up, like watching interviews, you know, you, you know, but even like not, you know, you think that like, if you, th if, if I think that I'm like lonely and quote unquote right now where I'm at, can you imagine like how like Drake must feel like, or people <laughs> like that? Cause like at that level, you don't know what anyone's intentions are if you don't know them prior to you blowing up. Yeah, they don't, know if, they don't know if you know. They could be a very good manipulator, actor, you know, narcissist. Like you don't, you you have no idea what people's intentions are. Even if they have the right intentions, can you trust them? Like, could because there, there, there's so many you know crazy shit that happens on like a path like that. So whether it's music, acting, business, whatever it might be, you know, there's so much disloyalty that you witness and that you experience and that you see from others in the industry on your path to wherever you're going and then once you get there you're like damn i have all i've seen all this shit i have all this knowledge i've been through it like what am i supposed to do i like i would imagine that it's very isolating to a to a, a, de a degree I, I guess not extremely isolating but i i, I can see how it, you know, super, super stardom can can really fuck up people's minds. Yeah, because like everyone around you is just going to want clout and money or fame or whatever from you. And you can't, you know, find the genuine people. And it, that's definitely a scary thing. Yeah, definitely. I and, see that. You know, what? speaking of that, you know, I, I had a... I had someone, a musician that I interviewed, um, and he was like joking about it, but like, you know, long story short, it was about like, you know, sharing something, like if I, you know, would have posted something, I would have done, you know, it would have like g given me the benefit. And I just, and I made it, you know, very clear to him, you know, very nicely. I'm not upset at him or anything, but I also want to make it clear on here, like when I interview people, 
I don't do it for clout or for views or for attention. Like, you know, especially with the musicians that I've interviewed this year and last year, it's all people that I like and I'm like a fan of. So, yeah, and I, I never ask anyone to repost our interviews or share them after I'm done with them. But I do want to say thank you so much and shout out to Zach Good of Smash Mouth. You know, he went out of his way. I didn't even ask him, you know, you know, and, and he posted the interview that we did on his website. And that was the first time that a musician or someone um, in the industry that I interviewed, you know, personally po- reposted the interview on like a website or something. Um, you know, I've had them obviously reposted on their Instagram story and things like that, but he didn't have to do that. Um, so, you know, obviously I messaged him and thanked him and was very grateful um, that he did that. But yeah, um, Because, again, I I never really seek for validation or or, or things like that. So when I or like compliments. So when that shit does come at times, sometimes it it catches me off guard. I I was not expecting to see that. Um, But, yeah, thank you so much to Zach Good. Go follow him. Very talented. Obviously, he's the new lead singer of Smash Mouth. um, And I know they have some upcoming shows, I believe. So definitely go check them out. Listen to the you know, recent two interviews of the interview I did with Zach and the interview that I did with Paul, the founding basis of, of um, Smash Mouth. Can't even talk or think. Um, another thing I guess just want to bring up briefly is for the first time ever, me and Tucker Carlson agree on the same thing. <laughs> we passionately hate Donald Trump. I never thought that I would no, see you. I don't, I, I don't hate anybody, but like, you know, because that's that's can't we can't put that energy. Or, you know, it's too much. But I strongly dislike Trump. But like, yeah, me, me and Tucker finally, you know, agreed on something. I mean, I can definitely strongly dislike anyone that any man that says grab her by the pussy and isn't joking. Like, I mean, even if they are joking, they shouldn't say it. Just don't say it at all. But, like, I don't know. I, I can't especially respect somebody. You, especially when you look like that. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it even worse. <laughs> For some reason, it just yeah. makes it worse. Um, it, it, know, it's crazy. He's, a, he's, a, he's definitely a, a character, and he's never going to be forgotten, I don't think. You know, one thing I do want to bring up very quickly is, you know, I came across this video on Facebook and it was about this guy who was out hanging out with his friends. They went out to like a, a club or something or a bar and they were all drinking, having fun. Everyone got fucked up. Um, and this girl, this woman got really, really, really fucked up. And she was like, you know, gr- you know, grinding up against him, you know, trying to, you know, initiate and he knew that she was way too drunk and he, wait trump no drunk no who are we talking about now i'm sorry i got lost you're talking about trump no i, I came across a random video of this guy who was like hanging out with like a group of friends they were at a nightclub or a bar whatever they all got drunk and but there was one woman that got really really drunk like too drunk like, and she was like, like he could have had sex with her, but he, like he had, res- he has, he has respect and, and he didn't take advantage of, of that situation. And I reposted and I said, this is facts. Like I, I've never done that, nor will I ever. And I think that any guy that does that or any person that does that when someone's extremely inebriated that, you know, really is not aware of what they're doing, you know. That's not okay. Even if they say it's okay, like, I still, like, to me, you know, first of all, I just have respect for women and people. And and second of all, you know, I feel like that's, it just, it doesn't seem morally right. And also, 
I ain't trying to get hit with a fucking, you know, accusation or like a lawsuit or some shit when I blow up, you know, uh, that I like tried to like rape somebody or someone. So like, I would never put myself in a situation where, you know, that, you know, someone could say something like that. And it's so sad because, you know, essentially the woman, you know, woke up the next morning and she told the guy, you know, thank you for, for not taking advantage of me because most guys do. Um, that really means a lot. And that's really sad that she even had to say, like, obviously, no, I'm, I'm grateful that she said that to him, you know, and, and, you know, thanked him. But like, it's sad that, that, that's a thing that she had to like, be like, like, go out of her way to be like, hey, thanks for not fucking me while I was, you know, half fucking conscious. Like, it's, it's a crazy world that we live in. Yeah, I just, I just feel like I just want to go and buy, uh, like a really big island and put my daughter there and myself there and my little family and just stay the fuck away from modern society and the way that the world is because it's so scary that like everyone's glamorizing this guy now and that's what you should do. Like people are just getting congratulated now for shit that they already should do as, as people just, just to be kind to one another and not take advantage of people. It's just crazy. Like everyone just uses everyone. And now people are astounded by someone not having sex with a drunk girl. Like that's just crazy. Like, I I don't know. It's fucking, it's mind boggling. And speaking of mind boggling, you know, and obviously I don't, don't want to get into this either for that long, but like, it's pretty sad if you really think about it, like really mind boggling that our president in the United States, our leader, can't even fucking articulate a single sentence. And this is the guy that is supposed <laughs> to be running our country. And don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not a Trump supporter either. You know, both of them are fucking yeah. both detrimental to society. They're both two complete phony narcissists. But, like, are we just going to ignore the fact that our, the guy who's running the free world, the, you know, the, the U.S. Is, is can't even form a full sentence? Is that not, is that, is that, is that, is that, is that not alarming to, isn't that to what the we general do? public? I think JT, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that what we do in America? Don't we just sweep everything under the rug and publicize shit that doesn't matter and tell everybody lies? Like it's just much. nobody gives a fuck. Pretty like much. this is welcome to America. Like America. I I don't America. Yeah. Make make America great again. Okay, what? To when when there was slavery? Like what what does that mean? What, I don't what know, does that but mean? I feel like when when was America great? <laughs> like, like, no, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, really asking. I'm really curious. Tell me. Like, y- like, yes, like the, f- like freedom. Okay. Yes. I like, get that to a certain extent, F- but for what, for, for white people like me, but what about every, ev- everyone else? Like when was America at its peak? When was it at its, when was it great? <laughs> I would love to fucking know because, you know, I'm not a historian, uh- you know, I don't have a, a doctorate in history, but I'm pretty sure that the world has been fucked up. The America has been fucked up from the get go. Do yeah. we not? Yeah. Do we not? Do we not re, you know, for do do we did we all forget how you know Christopher Columbus with you know basically pushing out and you know killing all the Indians? Like, we're not going to talk about Native Americans. Are we not going to talk about that? Like. Again, like Patty so, said, we sweep things under the rug. And then, we, guess, and then they teach this false narrative in school. Yeah. I guess being great again would be would mean to people that believe making America great again is possible would be, I guess, homicide or just like a huge tragedy of uh several thousands and thousands of people losing their life and land and their religion and their culture to just the white man that that's what america fuck, is fuck I, the whole make america great again that's that's make america great for the first time how did we get here <laughs> yeah but make america great that's for the, the beauty, first that's the beauty of that's, 
I, I feel like that was I feel like that was a little bit long of a slogan. Like we gotta come up with something better than make America great for the first time. For the first time. It sounds like something like a fucking se- like a, like a fucking seventh grader would come up with. <laughs> for the first time ever, a great America. No? <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't I don't know. know. We, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta work on something, but I'm gonna work on it. <laughs> um yeah, so obviously Creed three made over a hundred plus million in the box office opening weekend and shout oh, out yeah. to Michael B. Jordan. Shout out to Jonathan majors. You know, I, I came across this article where essentially Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan majors um, shout out. want to kind of collaborate in movies like how De Niro and Al Pacino does. And I think that's so fucking awesome. Like we need that. We like that 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 that'll be fucking amazing. I'm all for that. Like that that's that's what Hollywood needs. Honestly. That that'll be something great to see. Like two great actors collaborating and being like a dy- dynamic duo. Is this another like JT prediction? No, and they they already said they were they were going to do oh, that. I, I just think it's going to be a very successful, you know, f- adventure, so that, you know, thing that they do. Kind of just like you know the whole the whole like Kevin Hart Rock, you know, they they do all the movies together, or like you know Will Ferrell and uh, Mark Wahlberg, they, they they do all a lot of movies together, like you know something like that. Um, yeah, Adam Smith does that. I mean, Adam, oh my God, Adam Smith, what the fuck, Adam Sandler. Does that with that dude? What's oh, it, what did, that? He, Steve Buscemi with the crazy eye. Yes, yes, yes. You know, crazy you eye. know, he was a firefighter in New York City. Yes, I did know that. Did, I just did you know? Did you know after nine eleven? After he was already a successful actor, he went. He yeah, went back. He like helped out and like, you know, it says a lot about his character. And it's you could tell crazy. it took him a long time. And even though he, he he's had a lot of roles and things like that in movies throughout the years. Took him a long time until he got, I believe it was Boardwalk Empire. And that was the show, it was one of those shows that like really brought him to stardom. But um, yes, a- Adam Sandler does that with all of his close friends with Happy Madison Productions. You know, yep. he has love- he has the David Spade, the, you know, uh, Rob, he, you know, um, um, what's his name from King of Queens? Um, Kevin James, Chris Rock, you know, if Chris Farley was still alive, he would be in all the Adam Sandler movies. Um, yeah, David Spade, like the, they're all, they're all friends. They all do it together. Um, it's crazy. There's one story of, you know, after they were filming, um, what's the movie with all of them when they all like, it was actually filmed. Grown up. It was all, it was, it was, no, it was filmed in, um, Massachusetts. Uh, ironically, all of them. <laughs> yeah there's a couple of them um after the first one adam you know adam sandler i was gonna call him adam like just say adam like i know him on a personal <laughs> level like okay adam, adam, adam sandler than, i he, called him adam smith he, he bought he bought all the cast members a new maserati <laughs> holy shit and Damn. yes yes a maserati is not that expensive compared to but other cars, all but of still the no like the, i think the main ones like Okay, okay. Wait, wait a minute, JT. Maserati just came out with a supercar, and actually, that one is actually nice. So, okay. that's what David yeah, I mean, has. Does it still have the that. fucking Chrysler 300 navigation system built into that Maserati? Uh, it's, uh, I, think, I wow. think that's... I was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you gotta check it out, though. I'm serious. Maddie out. This is where I zone out. When they start talking about cars, I don't know if we have any other female listeners on here that don't care about cars, but I just tune out. Don't tune out, y'all. We're still here. <laughs> no, I just had oh, to chime man. in. Um, I, I can't wait till you hear back to this episode because I got those sound effects. And Shut you're, up. You're don't for, do it. You're in for no. Oh, no. Man. You no. just got maddied. Don't and no because I'm maddie myself. Exactly. That's not funny. So that means you get double Don't, maddie. Oh, I man, I already am a double maddie. <laughs> the fuck. Stop. Uh, so Dave Grohl, shout out to Dave Grohl, obviously lead singer of the Foo Fighters, you know, drummer of Nirvana. You know, he spent like 16 hours feeding 
like over like 500 people um shout out to dave bro that's a really badass thing to do honestly and also shout out to j cole you know it's not getting that much like recognition like on mainstream news but the fact that he, you know he went on youtube <laughs> to type in j cole tight beats found one that he really fucked with was like all right i'm actually right to this wrote to Wait, it what? Made, made a song to it and then let the producer who wasn't like a big time producer you know just like a youtuber like or, or a producer who puts his beats on youtube he jake jake cole recorded the song on the beat sent it to him it was like here you can release it on your channel to help your channel grow like that's respect shout out to jake wow cole. he not he, he didn't shit. have to do that shit he just gave he that just gave him game right there he, he just put him on well, that just shows how great of a person he is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we see that. I mean, he lives in New York City. He doesn't have a car. He rides his bike everywhere. I mean, he's so humble. So many pictures of that. Yeah, it is. But yeah, he's just a very intelligent man. Obviously, you can hear that in his music, um, just like Kendrick. Um, but yeah, another thing, you know, a lot of people don't talk about it this much, but like, are we all just going to forget how good? acting that Andre 3000 did in Four Brothers and I believe that was like 04, 05 like he was still kind of doing the music stuff at that point like and he killed that role I mean they all did a really great job you know but Andre 3000 really fucking nailed that role and I don't think people like really fully like if you go back and watch it you'd be like damn he's actually a really good actor yeah, for sure. It was just so sad. Like, I remember hearing, like, years ago, like, his mom and dad passed within, like, a, like a couple of, like, months between each other or some shit. I, I felt so bad. He was looking rough at that time. Yeah. There was an image that came out of, of him, like, a while after. Yeah. Yeah, he was looking rough. Seriously. Um, yeah. I guess uh, there's a Tom Brady... Uh, rookie card when he was a, when he got drafted by the Montreal Expos as a catcher in the MLB and it's going for a lot of money now um which no shit I knew it was going to happen um but I, I wonder how much it's going to go for I, I'm predicting it'll probably go for like two two point five three just crazy I, and it's it makes me so mad because I, I I used to be like an I was obsessed with collecting sports cards, baseball cards, basketball cards. I was I was that kid. I had like, you know, football, all like all the four major sports in America. I had like and I had really good cards that like and, and I stupidly like either they got damaged or they, you know, got thrown away by accident or I sold them for like a ridiculously low price. Like I had some cards that are probably worth now, like one card alone is, I think is worth over 20,000. I sold it for like 10 bucks. Damn. Sucks, man. Yeah. Sucks. That's how I feel about Pokemon cards. Yeah, Pokemon yeah, cards. Yeah, I had a lot of shitload. I had a shitload of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards, even though I didn't know how to play the fucking game. Like I, I like, like I, I used to, you know, get those cards. I used to go to Toys R Us, you know, I know for myself, I had like four binders full of Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z cards. Yeah, like, I, I would have. I'd be. I'd be rich right now if I had all the Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I used to have. That's facts. Rolling. I had a lot of rare cards, bro, that are worth a lot of money now, and I'm kind of pissed about that. You yeah. had one job, David. You had one job. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> no, you think my parents for that? My parents actually threw away my my cards and all that stuff. I'm mad at them for that. I don't know. Speaking as your fiance, it's probably because you didn't clean them up off the floor or something like that. Yeah, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Just kidding. Not really, though. Yo, David. Yo. You know what video I found? What video? <laughs> the, the, the ice bucket challenge video. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, y'all did? Wait, I need to see this video. Uh, oh, no. No, I can not see it. Nah. Why? Because I look ridiculous. I need to see it. No, I I look ridiculous. Nope. I need to see it. 
Now I'm going to hack into your hard drive and just see it for myself. She's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Agent Marquez. <laughs> That's not that's not something that was in front of any of our names as Marquez's except for one person, but I can't say who. Wow. It's getting juicy. It's all in my book, but it's not written yet. So what are you so, what are you, Natasha Bedingfield on ring? Listen, guy, I am such a good writer, and that's something you should know. I know you are. No, you don't. You never even read anything I've written. I don't because have to. I didn't post anything because I, don't I have, have to. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, like one day I just post everything and there and there's like short stories and novels and shit, and you're like, wait, where the fuck did this bitch come from? You know, New Jersey. That's where she came from. New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah, I gotta go back. To Jersey, I want to go back yeah, to Philly. I gotta I obviously Jersey. have an upcoming trip to New York City. Uh, New York City, yeah. land of the titties. New York City, nah, man, that's the concrete jungle, bro. I know, I know. I, know. I, have, I have so much respect for New York oh. and the tri-state. I love New York City. The tri-state loves New England too. Believe that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not, not when it comes to sports, though. Yeah, yeah, nah. That, yeah, that, <laughs> that's as far uh, as it gets a little. It, it, shit, for some yeah. people, it can go, it can uh, get a little uh, escalated very quickly, to say the that's least. Right. I've seen some crazy <laughs> shit happen, personally. Not even you know the stuff that I've seen on you know World Star or YouTube or whatever the fuck it might be. I'm still mad at the Patriots for like. For what? We fucking dominated. We crushed every team for 20 years. Three seasons. No, I've been mad at them for fucking years. It's of probably course been a you are because we fucking we were the best team for with for two decades. I don't know. Now I'm just thinking about the fucking Super Bowl, Super Bowl and how my mom was literally wearing Chiefs from head to toe. Hat. Uh, fucking. What's that called? Jersey or whatever, yeah, I, yeah. fucking socks, everything, Chiefs. I'm like, mom, what are you, what are you talking about? She's like, she's like, I really like that one guy. Who's who's the one guy? Is it Patrick Mahomes? I I don't fucking know. The one that has a brother that was in both, te- you know. Oh, uh, yeah, it is Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, she. I don't know what the yeah, fuck his, is wrong. With- his brother did some like. I think he like, did yeah? Was it him that did that shit at the bar? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, the, the, there's some cre- yeah, if it, I, I don't want to accuse him if, it, if that's not the right person, but I think I just seen something some wild sh- yeah. I don't know. Um I'll have to look into that, I guess. Who knows? I don't know. But uh yeah, I think uh we're going to wrap it up. You know, today was a really good show. Obviously, we had David on the show, and Maddie like always and JT, you know, I know the, the show hasn't been as consistent at as we were at one point in the year into season 14, but this is just a very temporary thing right now because there's just so much behind the scenes work and things that I'm working on. But just know that, you know, there's a reason why and it's going to be worth the wait. Trust me. Um, of course, if you're interested in advertising on the podcast, send me an email at onairwithjt at gmail.com. You can watch the show on YouTube, On Air with JT. Listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, On Air with JT. Uh, my Instagram is Justin Thomas Insta. Facebook, Justin Thomas, uh, On Air with JT as well. Um, you can follow the show on Instagram also at On Air with JT. TikTok, Justin Thomas TikTok. Twitter on air with JT, YouTube on air with JT, Snapchat Justin Thomas SC. I know that's a lot. So everything that I've mentioned to where to follow me on social media, to watch the show, to listen to the show, to contact me, it's all at onairwithjt.com. Once again, onairwithjt.com. Maddie and David, you already know the drill. <laughs> You can follow me at TikTok and YouTube is both lazy eye sixteen. Lazy and- eye.
Lazy Eye. I, I think I'm just going to change everything to Lazy Eye or Lazy Eye 16 very soon. But also, my name is Madeline Haley Marquez, M-A-D-A-L-Y-N-H-A-L-E-Y-M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z. And um, I just checked. You can type that in both to TikTok. I mean, TikTok, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, and, and I come up for all of them. So uh, just Madeline Haley Marquez is my name, and that's the way you can find me, or Lazy Eye 16. And David Chin? Yeah, on Instagram, you can find me at NizmoChin underscore 23. That's N-I-S-M-O-C-H-I-N underscore 23. And Facebook is David Chin. And Snapchat is Chinny Murders. All right, definitely go give both of them a follow. And, uh, yeah, thank you to everybody that listened or watched today's show or that's been showing love and support. We really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great day in the motherfucking JT way. Jay Maddie out. <laughs> I said you it owe first. me a fucking Coke. Nah. You just got <laughs> maddied. JT did it again. Have a great day the JT way. This is On Air with JT. Join JT, visionary and host for a 420 friendly improv and variety talk show. Featuring pop culture, news, interviews, debates, and the home of the famous JT Rants. Here, mental health awareness is at the forefront, with JT on a mission to inspire and spread mental health awareness. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. You can stay up to date and get in touch by heading to onairwithjt.com. To contact the show directly or for business inquiries, use onairwithjt at gmail.com. You are listening to On Air with JT. On Air with JT. Listen to On Air with JT on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Go to onairwithjt.com. If you are a business owner, brand, company, or anyone selling a product and you want to advertise on this podcast, email the show directly at onairwithjt at gmail.com. We are offering extremely low rates for a limited time. Once again, email the show at onairwithjt at gmail.com. JT did it again.